So, these things, they're absolutely awesome. And it might be one of those things where familiarity breeds contempt because they're all over the place. I mean, they don't sing, they don't dance, they don't put sugar in your tea, and they don't light up. So we kind of ignore them. But they represent a store of energy. Mechanically, of course, they're uh, springs. When you do that with them, you put energy in and stored it, you do that, you let the energy out. The other major way of doing that is just to twist them round and round themselves. But either way, they are in fact an energy store. And like all of these things, they have their own quirks. One of them is they're a one-shot deal. Once you do that, you put all the energy in you're going to put in and you can't change it. And once you do that, it all comes back out again and that's difficult to change. And so you must work with the kind of energy store you're using to get the energy out the way that you want it. Given its own quirks, there are some things that don't work particularly well. So for instance, a governor. A governor works by restricting the energy going in to restrict the energy going out. So it'll operate things like a valve to reduce the steam in a steam engine or a throttle to reduce the fuel going in into a combustion engine. Here, once you put the energy in, then that's what's coming out. You can't restrict it in the same way, so a thing like a governor isn't going to be so great. One other way that's frequently used, of course, is a brake. You put a apply a brake and it restricts the energy coming out of the point of use. But the way a brake works is to actually um, burn that energy away in friction. It creates a tremendous amount of heat. When a bus breaks, for example, there's enough energy in that braking to boil an egg. It's, it's a huge amount of energy. Given there's not a lot of energy in here, if you start burning some away through braking, you're going to get very little out. And so there's got to be another way. And of course there is. So we can work with this one-shot deal. One way to do with it is um, to put it into some kind of battery. Because if we connect this to a flywheel, the flywheel is a mechanical battery. Then we take the one-shot, spin it quickly, attach that to a flywheel, the flywheel will spin up, and then it will spin down slowly, giving out the energy slowly that we just put in quickly. And we did that with things like pull cord flywheels, that sort of stuff. Another thing to do is directly convert it to electrical energy like we did when we made a generator and store that in a battery or a supercapacitor and release it nice and slowly that way. Both of those would work because they're actually incredibly efficient. But then, of course, there is another way to control the output, and that's the way the clockmakers use, and it uses this. And this is an escapement wheel. All that happens here is there's a, a pole operated by a uh, pendulum. The pole engages with the teeth. When the pendulum swings, then it releases it and then stops it, and then releases it and stops it. So you have a controlled stepwise release of energy. Either of those are going to be good in order to get the energy out in the way that you might want to actually use it. Now we're going to use this to make a rubber band ratchet motor where we use the energy in a stepwise motion. Of course we could use that to make a rubber band driven clock which is pretty cool. But in order to do that what I've done is I've drawn this up in Tinkercad. In construction, it's exactly the same as the rubber band motor from Fideo 2297. It has a frame to hold everything in registration, a wind handle and cap shown in cream, but the significant differences are in light blue. On the left-hand side, we have a pinion, and that controls the escapement wheel, which you can see on the right-hand side, which has been added to the bobbin instead of a gear. There's also a gear above the escapement wheel for output. On the top, you can see that there's a ratchet, and just above that is the pole. What this allows me to do is wind it up without moving the gears, because one of the limitations here is when I wind that, it moves that gear, which is a bit of a pain. With a ratchet, we can wind it, but the gears won't move, and then when we let it go, the ratchet will engage with the pole and drive everything. Here are the parts printed off. Now, in addition, you're going to need a thrust bearing like we used in video 2297 and a skater bearing. The skater bearing actually goes in the centre of the pinion. The thrust bearing fits into this part, dropping in there like that. And then the bobbin just goes through the thrust bearing. When that's done, flip it over and you'll find this little ring and that glues on there and all that does is stops it dropping out. Don't glue it so tight that it isn't free to spin. When that's glued on, you glue that bit onto there and that's where the rubber band will pass. 
Then flip it over and take these two pieces, first of all with this bit pointing downward, and it goes in the little notch there, that bit goes in the other side of the notch there, and you glue those two bits together, making sure again it's free to turn. So the pinion slides in between those two bits there, and the important thing to note is that bit is pointing away, so when that comes it can shove it out of the way. So if you like, those point towards the centre, and then you put the axle in. Then we need our rubber band and our ratchet, and we feed it through here like threading a button, and then through this central hole and through that back plate there, and then knot it. When that's had a chance to dry, press fit the cap. Now don't glue this in, because you may want to replace that rubber band, because rubber bands do break. The main reason they break is People overwind them, so don't overwind it. And then put the turn handle, and it only fits one way, onto there, and press it down. There we go. Okay, so to test it, give it a few winds. Don't overwind it. And it'll only wind one way, because now it's got the um, ratchet and pole in there. It does make a satisfying clicky noise. Let's give it a few winds, hold it at the back, and we can Operate that. <laughs> to make sure it's working. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> so finally, to make this a real escape mechanism, of course, we need a pendulum. And a pendulum is just a, a long piece of rod. In this case, it's four millimetres. And there's a weight at the bottom. I've used a couple, but any weight will do, really. The period of the pendulum, that is the time it takes to swing between one point and the other point, is going to be given by how much weight that is and how far that weight is from the pivot point. That will dictate the time. That period dictates how long it takes to uncatch this catch and then of course how fast that will spin. That gear in the centre is meant to connect to uh, or other clockwork to drive your clocks. So you can alter the time by sliding the pendulum uh, which will alter for the time that that takes to unwind. But of course what we need to do now is give it a wind and see how our pendulum actually performs. So for me that worked really well, I mean there's plenty of nice clicky and ticky noises going on so it sounded like clockwork. Now like this it's a little bit wobbly and you have to hold it by hand and so the ticking isn't as even as it could be. Put it in a frame that'll sort that out. And people have said well why don't you replace it with a steel spring and <laughs> yes you could in which case you'll get the performance of a steel spring. You find a lot of these done in printed PLA and a rubber band is going to perform better than a PLA spring, I think. And of course, rubber band behaviour, spring behaviour, energy storage are all very interesting in themselves, which is kind of what we're exploring here. Now, we'll put this on Thingiverse, of course, and the link will be in the description in the bottom. So should anybody want to play around with this, please do feel free. It can be a module. You could increase the number of bands in there. You can change the band material if you like. I'm using latex because rubber bands come in actually a whole variety of rubber and natural latex ones will last longer. The neoprene rubber bands are actually rubbish, to be honest, but the latex ones are really good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.